Aloha beautiful pod it's bliss here and I'm super joyous to share a fun and cosmic transmission with the pod today about how to work our way out of the blueprint and go beyond the DNA bank I saw a post um, it was a big billboard and it said something about like DNA bank and all of your creativity um, goes in there and so I've been doing these love streams recently and I've been sharing openly and uh, about my own journey in the grids my own journey into um, what we might call the belly of the beast of our collective consciousness and um, and so some of the things that I've learned about creation and transformation and what is available to us now and to keep encouraging humans to take a quantum leap beyond the fictional narratives and so I'm going to share some of those codes today as well so if you think this love stream is going to be inspiring please share it that's called gifting and um, so three two one here we go all right so in the fictional fiction, we exist inside of the 64 codons of the human DNA. It's called the 64 star tetrahedron. It's also the I Ching. And I've described this many times before and I'll describe it again. And so that we can continue to get a sense from the place of our consciousness of what creation and creativity really is. And um, I saw a post today by Unite.Love and it said, um, don't worry about the things you can't change change focus on creating what you can and focus on creation so everything now is to really inspire people to understand that creation is what it's all about the cosmos is benevolent and it's responding to our capacity for creation and so we talk about creation and manifestation and the 369 and all these things all the time um, all the miracles in time and so we just want to keep sharing with the collective to understand that we can transform our creation in an instant like that by understanding hi Pete from Guatemala love you so much um, we've been on this journey we and Pete for a long time many miracles together we met at the tipping point conference in 2011 with John Kimmy and Jose Arguelles and Grandma Florida Mile and Barbara Marks Hubbard and all of those people who were help and Jose Arguelles all those people who were helping us to understand this big shift was coming so let's talk about what the shift is energetically there is a man named Carl Kalman and he wrote this great book called the nine waves of creation and if this love stream is inspiring please share it that's called gifting because it feels like we're in for a good transmission here we're just getting ready for takeoff so Carl wrote this book called the nine waves of creation and he really had a deep understanding about what the Mayan calendar in the end of time was all about what he was showing us what the astrological calendars were tracking is that a huge energetic shift was about to come into our our world our reality into our circuitry and it comes from the planetary body itself so the planetary body has been emitting different signals and we know this from the Schumann resonance um, you know the the leaps that it's been taking and recently the Schumann resonance was sitting in the gamma waves gamma is around 40 to maybe 47 or 44 Hertz of frequency and so gamma waves are extremely powerful places energetically to be because gamma is the place of zero gamma is a place of zero point I have been in gamma before being brain mapped for many miracle coordinates and it was mapped that a million Hertz of frequency were coming into my body at that time the average human has 12 to 20 Hertz of frequency coming in their body so because we have scientific data to show the power of gamma and what it is the experience I was having while I was in gamma waves for that extended period of time was that 
the entire reality was inside of me rather than the reality being outside of me. I was omniversal, omnipresent. I was having that experience of what it is to be God, be all of it simultaneously, be both the creator and the creation simultaneous. And so one of the things that I received when that experience happened was that I could see that we could shift things instantly. And when we came to time, one of the things we forgot is that um, we don't have to suffer, that we can actually shift our focus instantaneously to a completely different outcome. So as the planetary body, as the energy of the planetary body shifts, it becomes easier and easier to transform our external creation by under understanding what this body is greatest technology ever and i call this flight lessons 101 and the owner's manual that we left behind so we're here to share the owner's manual and no one is left behind so no one is left behind in their creation their creative capacities and to really see why we have come there's, um, I was watching a video recently, I've spoken about it a few times by Dolores Canyon, and she was a hypnotherapist and she took people into deep hypnotherapy sessions and she was able to show that this great transformation on the planet was coming and it all had to do with love and anything that was not aligned with love would be delineated from the picture. And so, um, in, in her video, what she said is the reason that we came to this great earth school is to learn how to, her word was manipulate, um, learn how to manipulate um, particles into form. I'm, I'm paraphrasing a little bit, but it's to learn how to become that creator of our creation and um, to enjoy and to play with it in love. So back to the piece of Carl Kalman's book and the nine waves of creation what Carl Kalman showed and if this love stream is inspiring please share it that's called gifting um, what Carl Kalman showed was that the planetary body through different he shows that the Mayan calendar is based on um, pyramids their their pyramids basically represent cycles in time so the base of the pyramid is the widest and as you go up the pyramid it becomes more and more narrow and that reflects that time becomes um, quickened from each leap on the pyramid and that's also what was the the mind calendar is about these leaps these cosmic leaps in time our experience of time and so um, time is time is a vibration it's a wave and so when our consciousness came into time it began to ride frequency like a surfer on a wave and that frequency in the bottom levels of the calendar in the origins of time in his book he says the Mayan calendar goes back like 16.4 billion years or something like that and so those waves of frequency were these massively long stretched out waves in time and so you know what it's like to ride a wave if you're a surfer if it's a steep wave you know you you go down really fast if it's a long smooth wave you get this long smooth slow ride and that's what our consciousness has been doing is riding these waves in time and so the end of time was when that connection of our consciousness to time could take a leap. We could get off the waves in totality. And we're spelling this out where this is information to help people understand something step by step. So stay with me. And if this love stream is inspiring, please share it. That's called gifting. Um, okay, so why are we explaining all of this right miracle now? Because what Carl showed in his book is that the planetary body would begin to emit a unique signal and that unique signal is what is being emitted now. That's why the Schumann leap is taking all these huge leaps and 
the new signal now is taking us into zero point. It's taking us into gamma. It's taking us into these places where our consciousness collapses now back in to the zero point beyond the personality, which is why all of our lives have been unraveling as we knew ourselves to be. This is very significant. It's felt uncomfortable. Maybe it's felt painful. Maybe we have experienced a lot of suffering and stress and so on. What happens as we learn to hold coherence is we collapse the polarity back in to the singularity. And once we get there, the epitome of the plan is to become the core cosmic principle creators of our creation, the great I am, and to enjoy creation. So in many traditions, we have been taught to just, you know, go into the void. That is not what this is about now. This is about the greatest renaissance ever of creation and creativity. Aloha, Illumina. Um, and so we are so inspired to share how to bring ourselves to this place together so we can enjoy and have fun. So every one of us is a different point of consciousness in the great oneness of the truth of who we are. And creation is allowing us to have that individuated perspective of creation. And nature is showing us now that the creation is all about collaboration. And so we have had to learn to overcome our polarized expressions of ourself, our polarity. And inside of the matrix, inside of the maze, our external reflections at a certain level of the game, our external reflections provide us the intel, they provide us the information to see what we need to transform and change inside of ourselves energetically and vibrationally. This is the greatest technology ever and it is all about understanding that we are learning to attune our instrument. Just like if we learn to play a saxophone or a flute, if you didn't get your tongue and your mouth around the reed just right when you blow the note, you get this squeaky sound. So we are learning to attune ourselves just right. So if we think of ourselves as an instrument, this learning to get the energy just right to that perfect place of coherence, once we establish that place of coherence and we are able to hold that place of coherence within us, then we take the leap. So this is what it means to integrate our polarities, integrate our masculine and feminine back into the zero point and so on. So we share many, many techniques and um, how to do that. We all share the simple one. If you're stressed, if you're not in your coherence, if you're feeling imbalanced inside of the self, cross your wrists, cross your ankles, clasp your hands, close your eyes, deep breathe to bring that coherence inside of the self. I was at yoga this um, rising and one of the great instructors, her name is Danielle, and today she said our greatest superpower is self awareness and I just love that our greatest superpower is self-awareness so we learn to find that awareness of the self by first observing our external reality as a reflection as a mirror to know like a Jedi based on our reaction based on our response to the external reality we learn to attune ourselves. We learn to become coherent. As that coherence becomes stabilized inside of the self, something miraculous happens. The polarized aura collapses back into sovereignty 
back into being sovereign. Our aura becomes sovereign itself and energetically we can no longer be pushed and pulled by the reflections outside of the self. What is now happening because many on the planet have brought that coherence inside of the self is that it is beginning to collapse the fabric of the matrix, the fabric of the time-space continuum that we have been inside. It is collapsing and creating holes it's annihilating the fabric of the matrix itself. That's why there's so many different experiences happening simultaneously. Some people are in nirvana, some people are in bliss, some people are experiencing pain and sorrow and suffering. Collectively, what is happening is the matrix now is imploding. It is collapsing on itself. The good news is, we are not the matrix, we are not part of the matrix, and we do not have to fuel the matrix ourselves. So this gets into a conversation about consent, and that is gonna be in another love stream following this with our beloved Tess Athena that we are going to do right after this love stream. Right now, we wanna get back to the core cosmic principles of our creation. So as we learn that coherence inside the self, if this love stream is inspiring, please share it. That's called gifting. Share it, share it out. Okay, as we come to this place of coherence inside of the self, we have a choice. There is a shortcut in these genetics, the 35th gene, and it's called choosing love itself. Choose love, choose to view and experience everything in our story through the place of love that means moving our energy down into the heart the unified mind and the heart begin to attune to a different reality as well we begin to understand that language the languages of babylon are just a distraction the clothes we wear the countries that we come from all just forms of perceived differences or separation but as the attunement in our instrument becomes so coherent we have the capacity to listen to everything and everyone from the place of love and now this is why nirvana and bliss starts happening inside of us because we recognize that everything is magnetized together through the energy of love and we don't need so many words anymore we don't need proof that someone loves us we don't need to continue to perpetuate relationships as we knew them we don't need answers from another we don't need any kind of um, affirmation from the external world that we are okay. Everything slows down inside of us because nature is speaking a harmonic language and that language is beyond time. So we begin to experience this different attunement. You might even be feeling it inside of yourself because this transmission is bringing something through in the space between the words. Just see if you can feel that attunement inside of yourself. Maybe something in the throat and the chest is relaxing. Maybe this emanation, this experience of energy is starting to come up inside of you. That energy is a different kind of system and that's what's coming online is these different systems it's like a different processor is coming online and so it's more expansive and it's more attuned and it's much larger the energy field of it is much larger and so our focus is beginning to turn in and tune it's like we're going from being solid to particle and when we become particle and we 
connect to the more space between the particles we begin to realize there's no separation between us and the plants us and the sky us and the house us and the earth it's all just particles and our our consciousness begins to spread out into all of those particles and the space between the particles as well and we actually realize some kind of new sensory system is turning on I had a really cool experience last Miracle Night. I love to go out on my scooter and ride around with music and turn on all my scooter lights. And um, when I got back from my ride, my scooter remained in this eye and I was walking through my sanctuary space and I was still seeing completely my scooter within my eye. And I just sat down and I was enjoying whatever is shifting inside of my brain that is allowing me to experience this reality in a completely different way. So one of the invitations, because there's many things going on in what feels like a collective consciousness right now, for those who are turned on, enjoy the play, trust the play know that when we focus on what is now coming through without looking back don't turn back and look back that is in every allegory in every story of transformation and awakening we can go down and through into the underworld to collect aspects of ourselves to meet them where they're at to share with them the codes to reflect to them love so that they can find their way back. And then it is for us to move forward only and not look back. Every story, every myth of rescuing someone from the underworld, we are not to look back. So we are going to keep posting these little love streams to share and help guide us through and the emanation is in the space between the words that is actually coming through and our processors are in a great transformation so allow ourselves to remain in the middle of the river the Hopi prophecy said and we share this all the time and it came through in a transmission the other night which was really beautiful the Hopis told us there would come this time when we would push off from the edge of the river there are those who would be afraid they would hold on tightly they would suffer greatly the holding on tightly and the suffer greatly is holding on to old ways that are outmoded it's holding on to our ego it's holding on to our personalities it's holding on to old style relationships many of those of us who are part of this love stream have learned to push off from the edge of the river keep our heads above water look around to see who is with us and celebrate for this could be a time of celebration so the codes with this piece right now that are coming through are saying any remnant aspects of our ego are now completely irrelevant because whoever is around me and you consistently are floating in the river that knows its destination and the river is flowing fast it could be a time of celebration so celebrate who is around you transcendent of the words they use the language they speak the way they dress the way they've lived their life the choices that they've made all of that is irrelevant we have spent many miracle years decoding ourselves from the shadow frequency for any of we who are around we consistently we can come to this different place inside of we to know that we are in celebration together even if the external still might reflect differences even though the external might still require the egos meeting 
together in those differences, all of that is completely irrelevant now. Anyone who is around you regularly, celebrate because we are in the celebration now. The river is flowing fast. It knows its destination. What holds us together is love. This is such a huge piece because the mind doesn't need to decode anything anymore. Whoever is with us, the celebration piece is the relevant piece. And we will go back to the Carl Kalman book, The Nine Waves of Creation, where he shows in the book the different emanations that came from the planetary body at different times affected different lobes of the brain of this instrument that created different experiences and perceptions through this interface, through this lens. And the ninth wave unity is when the brain transcends all separation. And that is what we are in. We are in ninth wave unity. So for those of us who stay here and we play in it and we transcend the need to force relationships to work or try to figure it out again, just, it doesn't matter. Just hug just love those who are regularly with us in our lives because we're keeping our heads above the water we are in the center of the river the river knows its destination and it's flowing fast all we need is love and we know the basics of love we know how to meet another in Lakesh. Namaste. The wholeness of me honors the wholeness of you. Because what we are doing is busting ourselves out of this game of genetics. And when we see billboards that say DNA banks, meaning that we're going to plug our DNA creativity into a matrix bank, we would say, we would invite we to consider we don't have to stop there. In fact, containers are meant to crack and we aren't meant to remain in this two strand DNA. We are actually meant to transcend gravity and time. And because enough on the planet are now lit up, they are sovereign. We are sovereign in our aura. It is blowing the gravity and time conditions of the time-space continuum up. It's literally annihilating it. And there is nothing to fear because our consciousness is eternal. And all those dreams that have been living inside of us are already here. So we are going to do another transmission now. If this love stream is inspiring, please share it. That's called gifting. We're gonna to jump to another love stream now and we've put in the description box some of the links to the other love streams we've been doing that again help those who are awakened to understand why we would want to remove our consent from the systems, from taxes, from driver's licenses, from insurance, from anything that is at the crux of holding together the system and we'll explain why, because the systems are not organic. They were created by the mind and they require the organic aspect of our consciousness to retract its consent to the systems so that the systems can dissolve and the systems are in decline. So there's nothing to fear. Every we has a role and a purpose to play and we are part of nature whether our ego recognizes it or not we are part of nature and nature is using us in every way to fulfill her creation her purpose her mission and it can actually be 
a lot of fun for us when we know how to come into her conditions which are transcendent of gravity and time in the wholeness of her consciousness so let's continue to have fun and to know that everything that is unfolding is perfect and to share our gifts to share our gifts to share your word to share your love to trust to know to go inward withdrawing our energy from the systems allows us to go more deeply inward to rebalance the energy that we gave to the external the 35th gene is about taking that energy back in so that we create balance between the internal and the external again so we're going to jump to another love stream in a few miracle minutes with miss tess athena and a wonderful filmmaker and friend and creator and we're going to jump in to the systems again and we're just going to keep invoking and inspiring and inviting all of we pot to jump in push off from the edge of the river and jump right in we love we so much if this love stream is inspiring please share it that's called gifting and i'm going to put a few more links in the description box in a little while for other love streams we've been doing you can go to unity transmissions we're reposting some of the great meditations on there you can go to that on youtube unity transmissions or unity transmissions on spreaker.com you can download the spreaker app you can listen to the um, sharings that we've been doing there we are just flooding the field with love we love we so much. Aloha. Mwah.